Hey Las Vegas, thanks for joining us today on Realty Check. We are your local Las Vegas real estate news show, bringing you what's happening in real estate here in Vegas from the professionals. So <clears throat> today on our show, we're going to have two guests with us. We have a real estate professional and a mortgage professional. So um, if you guys are watching our show, please take a moment, like, comment, share, tell your friends about it, and let's get started. Walt is our first guest today. Walt, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, my name is Walt Ford, and I am with IMS Realty, which is stands for International Management and Sales. Okay. And um, we're just a small private real estate firm here mm -hmm. in Las Vegas. And I am a broker, and my business partner is also a broker. So we are a dual broker team. That's good. And um, anyway, we specialize in, um, we started in property management years ago, but that blossomed, of course, into sales. And so we service um, all of the, you know, greater Las Vegas area. That's awesome. And at two brokers in, in, in that corporation, and you guys definitely know how to stay out of trouble, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that is very good. Or share the trouble. Or share, or share the trouble. <laughs> of course, of course. So, so that's great. Thank you for being on the show. And we have Rocco. Rocco, I, I've worked with Rocco before yes, on financing, and Rocco is a mortgage professional. Rocco, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, my name is Rocco Latella. I'm with Streamline Home Loans. Mm -hmm. It's a local boutique company. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been in the business for almost 30 years. Years, so mm -hmm. I like to think I know my way around financing. Yes. Uh, I've been in Vegas for about 22 years now and I love it here. Yeah, yeah. Vegas is a great place to be. The weather's nice. It gets a little hot in the, the summertime, but That's... other than that, it's pretty fair when you compare it to all the other places across the country. Mm. <laughs> the key is no snow. Exactly. No snow. Yes, we hate the cold. Right now it's 60 and I'm dying. So That's comfortable. Yeah, <laughs> not for me. <laughs> not for you. I know, when I moved here, I thought I would never be cold again, but now I get cold. Like, that's yeah. like that. When it's 55, 60, that's I'm still how cold. I, get. I mean, I, yeah. think, I, I think your body temperature in your blood, I think everything you get used to. You it. adapt yeah. somehow. You, you adapt. Yeah. And all yeah. of a sudden, when it's 40 degrees, you're like, oh my God. Uh -huh. But when I lived back east, and when it was 10 degrees, mm -hmm. it was okay. Yeah. But now, as I've gotten older with the cold weather, I, I don't want any part of it. Yeah. yeah. As a you. Vegas local, like 60 degrees, I'm one of those weirdos that walk around like an Eskimo. So it's way too cold out there. <laughs> with gloves me. and a hat. Oh, gloves, hat, boots, oh, everything. Like it is, I, I, you know, I'm not used to that weather here. I'm That's a Vegas funny. girl. So, <laughs> so we're going to open up this show talking about real estate inventory. What's going on in the market? Oh my goodness. Um, there are single family homes. As of today, our inventory has dropped down to 2,082 single family homes on the market in Las Vegas. That's nothing. That is across all price points. That's extremely low. Um, there are not enough houses for us to sell out there. Um, so it is, it, it's brutal for buyers right now, right? Have you? It is. It's you, tough. You guys have been experiencing that? The, yes. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, you were saying earlier that you have a lot of buyers that are pre-approved that just, you know, they're, they're struggling finding houses, right? Yeah, I have several buyers right now that are pre-approved, pre-qualified, all ready to go. All their documents are in and they're going out and making offer after offer after offer and they're getting beat out by investors or cash buyers. Cash buyers or, you know, those people, third, they got thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000 cash to put above an appraisal, wave in the appraisals. I mean, it's really hard for a traditional mm -hmm. buyer trying to buy their first home to get get in there right now because it's, there's there's not a lot and there's a lot of competition. How, you, how yeah. are you feeling about that, Walt? Yeah, same. I think everybody's experiencing the same thing right now. We have lots of buyers that are just waiting, you know, in the wings for the right thing to come along. Mm -hmm. and, um, and I think we're going to get there, though. I, I personally think we're going to get a little increase in inventory coming up. I do. Up. I, I so. do. With the rate changes, I feel like it, it can't stay like this. Last year, you know, the same thing happened, you know, in the beginning of the year, and then it, it started to slow down a little mm -hmm. bit, then it picked back up. You know, we're just on this little roller coaster here. So yeah, it's uh, it's definitely getting challenging. Um, sellers, we need you to list your houses. We need houses. We need inventory. You hear me out there? Um, price reductions. We had 183 this week. It's not many. Mm -hmm. um, those are you know, again, when you see price reductions, usually it's just homes that are overpriced. It happens. Mm -hmm. um, the nothing, um, that's nothing to show any type of shift. Um, for all of you out there waiting for the big foreclosure flood to hit, there's two in Vegas. <laughs> so 
Good luck with that. It's not that's, <laughs> that's not coming our way. No, it's not. Yeah, there's two foreclosures on the market. Um, and I'm sure everyone's jumping all over those. So um, on that note, uh, you know, KLAS just released a report um, that, that you know, was talking about the median home price. So over 2021, it went up 23.2% from a year before. Mm -hmm. Um, in 2020, median home price was three four three hundred and forty five thousand, and um, in December it hit four twenty five, which was up five thousand from November. That's huge. So what what do you guys what are your thoughts on that? What do you feel like that's uh, that's doing to these these home buyers? I feel so bad for them. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think that I also feel like if by watching the way everything plays out, that we're going to see the the increases are going to continue. I don't think they're going to continue at the same rate as they have been. But in Vegas, we always do everything double everywhere else, right? <laughs> so it's like with, you know, nationally, I don't think we're going to see the price increases, the value increases is going as rapidly as what we saw. And I think I kind of feel like we'll follow suit, but yet we'll probably trend a little bit higher. Yeah. So you think the median price range is, is, is likely going to go up from, yes. from where it's at right now? Yeah. So like an entry level home, I mean, where it's, it's, sounds so impossible to me, but at the same time, I see it happening like an entry-level home, a, a, a first-time home is going to be 500,000, right. 500 right. grand. And I mean, it, it, a few years ago, 500 grand could get you a mansion. Mm -hmm. So well, the, pro the problem is the living wage right now is so far behind what the housing prices are. And you have a lot of lower end or medium families that can't afford to buy a house. Right. Everybody seems to be focused on rate rate, rate. And, and that's that's important. You should be. It's your payment. Yeah. But, but when you're looking at buying a house, and this is the advice I give everybody, especially in a competitive market like this, if you love the house and you're happy with the payment, don't let an eighth percent in the rate stop you from pulling the trigger and buying the house. Because right. you continue to sit on the fence in another six months, if this continues to go up, you're going to wait yourself right out of the market. Yeah. And you're going to continue to rent. And those are also going up. And let's be honest, if you're renting a house and you're paying 2000 a month rent and you're buying a house and your interest rate is whatever your interest rate is and you're still paying 2000 a month, does it matter you're paying that? Like paying people get same. focused on the rent instead of just realizing or wrapping their head around this payment. You know, it, it's, right. it's what, it, it makes more sense to own your own home and whether that's an entry level home or not, you're paying yourself, you're not paying someone else's mortgage. So right. a lot of people are not listening to professionals like us. <laughs> they're listening to their aunts, their uncles, their brothers, their cousin, the plumber, the electrician, and they're getting a lot of bad advice. Oh, or yeah, the people that bought homes during the crash are right. telling them like, you can't pay that for a house. Well, mm -hmm. it's like, okay, well, that magical unicorn home that you know, is 200,000 doesn't exist. I, I seen a manufactured huh? home just listed the other day, 275. Yeah. So those... Well, if you, if it's, it's just important to keep history in mind. If you look at historical data, which I was just recently looking at the last 40 years, I mean, intra, or, um, values have just gone up. I mean, we have our, it's like anything else. You get the, the highs and the dips and the high, but on an overall trend over the last 40 years, real estate has continued to increase. Of course. And so it's going to continue. Now, whether we hit a peak here at some point, we will. I don't think we're going to crash, but I think we might level out. There might be a reset. I mean, everything, like you just said, everything is cyclical. Yeah. Everything, everything runs, especially on the finance side, I think as well as the real estate side, every seven, 10 to 12 year cycles. Mm -hmm. And that history constantly repeats itself. Right. Right. But as far as with inflation, with the cost of living in general going up, everything happening, I don't see prices going backwards. No, no. Like it's just not, I, I mean, that, that recession that we had 2008, 9, 10, all those things, that was, a, that, that was something that we probably are not going to see right. again. And it's so hard to make people understand that that was, that was a fluke. That wasn't right. supposed to. Well, it was. It was. It was a perfect storm. It for was. Lack a, it, of a better it, word. Yes, it was a perfect storm. But it, I just don't feel like that's something we're going to see again. And when you look back, I you know I was watching a um, Mad Men. Mad Men. Uh, you know that. Love that show. I, yeah. I, love, I love Mad Men. Right. Nin based in 1950s, and there is a, a condo. You know the the when a, you know one of the the people are looking at a condo in Manhattan, and he says. It's very expensive. It's thirty thousand dollars, and I'm like, ah. 
<laughs> Could you imagine? Yeah. But uh, again, that's perspective. 1950s, I'm sure that was, you know, the, the, the yeah, price ranges of the homes sure. at the time. We're not going to see that. Mm -hmm. um, we're not going to see prices go backwards. Over time, prices will always increase because the cost of living is going right. to increase. My well, parents' first house mm -hmm. in New Jersey was, I think, $36,000. Yeah. And when my dad passed in 2015, I think the house was sold for like four fifty. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, it, it's over time, you know, the cost mm -hmm. of going to a movie. Yeah. That's not going to go back either. If you could go back, right? right. Say the, yeah, right. yeah, yeah. I know my I, my parents moved us from we were I was born in San Jose, and it was 1974 when they sold their house for twenty five thousand dollars. <laughs> and, and, uh, and and it's where it's about 1.2 million now. It's crazy. <laughs> Insane, house. right? Yeah. Give me a time machine. But on <laughs> one thing on that too, on the prices, I think where, what was the year forecast? I mean, we're so far behind in supply and demand. Correct. I mean, we're thinking what five years minimum before the supply can catch up with the demand. At yeah. least, yeah. Absolutely, and I mean, real estate essentially it's a commodity. Everyone's gonna have to have something mm -hmm. somewhere to live. So. Right that's that's not going away right um we're running out of land in the country i mean nevada has a lot of land yeah. but um but that that's a whole nother subject but we are you know the country only has so much land so much real estate that can be built you know right. over time and and we're we're building we're growing at, at a, a rapid rate so it is it, I, I just feel like values will continue to increase mm -hmm. even if they do have a slowdown or the market has a bit of a shift that's always going to happen, but the essential, you know, price isn't going to change too much. I can see things doubling in ten years. As oh crazy, my gosh! As crazy as that makes <laughs> especially if we're going to run out of land. Yeah. Because it, it it could happen. It could yeah. it could happen. Yep. Um, so uh, on that note, you know, the news, I was, um, uh, watching the news. I try not to, but you know, I have to. So I was watching the news yesterday and they're talking about, you know, inflation may bring another recession and just all the economics behind that. And, uh, you know, my thoughts on that are, I don't feel like the, the market's going to be, you know, shifting too much regardless of how that affects everything. And what are you guys' thoughts on that? Uh, I'm, I mean, I'm in, I agree with you on that. 100%. Yeah. I don't feel like we're going there. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, well, inflation is what? It's at a 39-year high. Mm -hmm. We're at 8%. You know, and that sucks. It does. Because I mean, <laughs> everything is driving up. Yes. The only thing that's not going up are you know what the feds are controlling, what is short-term rates. I think it's, if, they, if they play it right and they don't raise them a lot, I think we're going to be okay. Yeah. And you think that they're going to be? I, I mean, I would hope, hope that they're going to be mindful of that as well. You know, um, when they're, they're- They said there's gonna be three to four increments. Yeah. But I think they're like, you're right, they're gonna be mindful. I, I hope that they're mindful about that and they don't just like throw a wrench in everything. Mm -hmm. But you know, I mean, that, that would that would make us trust our government to be right. <laughs> to be good and out. And it does, it, it scares people. But I think again, if you remember history, you know, I think I, um, heard someone else talking about it too on another podcast, but it was talking about interest rates. And I mean, when I bought a house in Pocatello, Idaho, back in '90, I think I paid 18 percent. 18. Yeah. Oh my yeah. gosh, I, my my first home was seven and a half percent, and that was good. I just remember yeah. the lender being like, "Hey, that's awesome." And yeah. I was like, okay. When cool. I first broke into the business, interest rates were around 10 or 11 percent, <sighs> and the and the trend was, and this is the funny part. We were selling nine and three quarters percent with three points to buy the rate down. Mm -hmm. And people were, I hate, I don't want to say killing each other, but they were literally killing each other to get that rate and to buy those points. Yeah. And, you know, this is one thing that I guess people don't realize, <clears throat> whatever the rates are, whatever the market is, buyers want to buy homes. You know, they will make it work. Yes. Regardless of what happens. I mean, you could go back five years ago, you could go back and tell a buyer, like, you're going to have to, pay your own down payment and pay your cl closing costs. And they'd be like, no way. Mm -hmm. And now they're like, yeah, we have to, you right. know, that that's, that is what it is. And people will conform to whatever the market right. is. Um, at the same time, you know, for all the people that are like, oh, I'm going to wait till the market crashes to buy, to buy a home and prices come down. What they don't remember, um, which, you know, maybe they weren't shopping in the market at the time or whatever. 
during the crash, you couldn't get loans. No. Right. Like financing was not easy to get. Mm -hmm. So all of these people that are like, I'm going to wait for that to happen again. I'm like, you don't want that to happen again. You're not going to get a mortgage. No. Yeah. It was very, you had to be, um, extremely well qualified and have a lot of money to put down to be able to even get a mortgage yeah, during that period during those times financing literally came to a halting crash yeah didn't fha like stop for a while everything everything was upside down yeah yeah so i mean that's mm -hmm. nothing to wish for no right and so people were like hey i wish for those prices but they don't realize the whole the whole temperature of the market that right. it was at the right. time right so that's um certainly nothing to to wish for or hope for, you know, those prices would be great. I'd love to buy a lot of homes at a hundred thousand as well, <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, but there, there's a lot more factors that go into play Correct. there. And we're not headed, sorry, but we're not headed into that. You can probably speak to this the best, but, um, you know, I've, I've heard a, a little bit now, oh, people are overstepping, you know, selling, taking their equity, moving up when they really shouldn't be moving up income. wise you know, they don't have the income and we're head and it's going to head toward another crash, but that's not true. I mean, you're not, uh, you're still not loaning people money that can't afford the payment. No, we're really careful looking at the ratios, looking at all the factors to make sure that they can afford the payment and continue the payment. Right. Yeah. We also want to make sure we, I always make sure they have enough reserves just in case you have job loss, a fatality, anything at the house that can stop you from making a payment. You know, I always want to be mindful to tell my clients, let's make sure you have something in reserves, God forbid. Right. Yeah. You know, that's, I think it's important. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Lending is still very strict. The buyers that are purchasing homes and getting mortgages now are well qualified mm -hmm. because everything is scrutinized. You can't just, you know, slide yeah. under the radar and put the house in your dog's name. It's right. not, there's, that's there's not a thing anymore. Checks and balances yeah. ac across the board. Yeah. So you're right. You're both right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, yeah, I, I, I feel that way as well. Um, one of the issues that we're dealing with as realtors, I'm sure Walt, you, you're running into this too, is why are, I, I believe it's one of the main reasons why we have such low inventory is there's a lot of sellers that would love to sell their house. They don't know where they're going to go because they'd have to substantially move up, um, be, be planning on doing a move up home or, you right. know, um, upgrading their the, their home or what, what they're living in, in order to have it really make sense. Because if not, they're going to be in a very similar home. Mm -hmm. Is that something that you, you're, you're seeing a lot? Yeah, I think that's the fear, but I don't think it's totally, I don't think it's a, a, a serious fear that they should rely on 100%. Right. Because you can step up and you can move up into that other property and you can Correct. not, you don't have to be you know, buried in a, in a loan that's costing you a whole lot more money than, right. as, you know, especially depending on what rate they got in at or, or, or whatever. But, um, I think we're going to see, I, I think we'll see all this level out. I think we're going to have more sellers and right now it, it is a little tough. Um, you know, I work with a lot of investors too. And of course, I'm sure you're doing the same thing. We're reaching out to people. Do you want to sell? Are you yeah. ready to sell? It's time to sell. And they're hanging on, you know, yeah. oh, I want to hang on just a little bit longer. Um, but um, I think there's, it's starting to give a little bit. Yeah. You know, people are starting to see, okay, well, now I could sell this investment property and I, I can do really well. And should I, should I take a risk or, you know, what should I do? And, I, and we're, you know, we're constantly on the hunt for that. Yeah. But I, I'm seeing it ease up a little bit with, with the mindset. Yeah. And you know what drives me crazy um, just with consumers in general is, you know, it's the... I'm going to wait it out and going to wait it out. And then the second you see any type of like shift or, you know, inventory start raising, everyone wants to list at once. Mm -hmm. It's like, this is the wrong time to list right, right now. Like this right. is impulse. Yeah. It, and and I, I see that so often, you know, back in August, we had a little mm -hmm. bit of a slowdown for a couple months. I have seen that a lot too. Yeah. Um, then it's just, you know, it's just like, whoa, this is the wrong time. You know, I've been telling you the time to sell and the time to list is is right now mm -hmm. when there's no inventory mm -hmm. no competition you're gonna get top do dollar and there are things as realtors that we can work out for you such as lease backs you know staying in the home for a couple months to where you have your cash you have you know the the ability to be able to go out and shop without having any contingencies hanging over your head there's definitely ways we can work around in this scenario where i and i'm, I'm sure you do this as well Walt. 
I'm never in a, I'm never going to leave my my clients homeless. You know, we're right, going no. to talk to them and work through their mm-hmm. their issues and decide what's the best scenario for them. I mean, there are times that I have a seller that says like, no, I'd rather just go into, you know, temporary short term right. um, rental or something in between. And that's, that's fine with me. That's fine. If that's what you're wanting right. to do, that's fine. But if that's not okay, we're going to have to work out a scenario. And that might mean passing up some of the offers um, to make sure that we have the offer that fits what their needs are. Right. Yeah, yeah. Right. exactly. And yeah. this is the market to do it. Right. It is. Yeah, and it's still um, it's still strong on from an investment po- uh, point of view. The aspect we're we're buyer heavy right now, you know, as probably a lot of yeah. real estate agents are. We have some listings, but we're working with a lot of buyers, mm-hmm. and um, there's good investments out there right now because, as you know, the rents have followed the values, and even in some case, even more. Mm-hmm. And so there's still good investments. I mean, if you look at the Summerlin area and the condo market. I oh my mean, gosh. We're, we're working with a few of those, buying some of those right now. Um, they're still good. Yeah. I mean, the cap rates are, I mean, not what they were years ago, but they're decent. You know, um, if you can get a 5% cap rate, you're doing good right now. And, yeah. and you can. Yeah, absolutely. And because rents are rising. Mm-hmm. People are paying almost anything for rent right now. It's like right. you, yet the landlords are calling the shots. On that note, people that are out there that want to do investment properties, buy these properties and get some cash flow, get some income coming in. Uh, Rocco, tell us about this program. It's a cash flow program, debt service coverage ratio, DSCR, 70% loan to value. DSCRs have been around for a while and they're, they're actually what you just said. They're debt service loans. Okay. Uh, they're great for investors. We don't need any income qualifiers. So you don't have to go through tax returns and W-2s and all those other things. As long as you have the right FICO score, which is at least above 700, okay. and you're putting anywhere between 20 and 35% down, we can structure this loan. And as long as the rent that you're pulling in on the property services the debt, which is the mortgage payment, it's pretty much a very easy way to get qualified on these loans. So for all you investors out there and all you agents that work for investors, if your investors are cash heavy, mm-hmm. These are the loans to get in. They can get in with decent down payments and the rates, depending on the FICO scores, are in between three and five percent. And that's really not that bad. That's not bad for an investment property. And I mean, in all in all reality, it makes perfect sense. I mean, if you're putting 30 percent down on a four hundred thousand dollar house, that's one hundred and twenty thousand of your own cash you're putting as a down payment. I'm sure the mortgage companies see that as, you know, who's going to put one hundred and twenty thousand dollars cash in in default? Well, even if you're going to buy an investment property and go through agency financing, which is traditional financing, Fannie, Freddie, Ginny. You still have to put 20 to 25 percent down. Correct. And then you have to go through all your financials. Mm-hmm. With the DSCR loans, you take all the financials right off the table. It, I, I hate to say it, but it's going back to the old days. It's almost like a non-income qualifier, but mm-hmm. it's not because the debt is servicing the loan. Okay. So that it, as long as you have proof of like lease agreements or proof of, of of what's going on, and and again, it's a substantial percentage that you have to come in down with it, but it makes perfect sense if that's what you're, you're yeah. trying to qualify for. The way the loan is underwritten is the, the appraisal is, they're going to do an appraisal. The appraisal is going to do his research on the rents. Yes. He's going to come up with a number on the rent. And as long as that rent is enough to cover the debt, then it's pretty much an approvable loan. Right. Yeah. So for instance, Say you're purchasing a home and the rent rolls are showing that that home's only produ- producing thirteen hundred a month rent, but you're saying that you're going to be getting sixteen hundred a month rent. That that appraisal where the they're reviewing the rent rolls, it, it's not going to work out that way. It has to be able to show proof that you're able to get the amount rent that it has been Correct. getting. Correct. Correct. Okay, that makes perfect sense because you can't just like make up a number and say I qualify because I'm going to charge this much rent when right. it's not. That's not the average rent in the area. Right. And that's what they're going to go off go after. They're going to go after the average rent in the area, <clears throat> specifically if it's a high rise. They're going to look specifically at the HOA and look at all the average rents in that community, in that building, and that's how they're going to determine what the rent for that unit is. So as long as that rent is going to cover the debt, you're fine. Right. 
and going, you know, now that we're getting into, into high rises, if you don't mind me bringing up. No, I don't mind you bringing it up at all. We, we also do uh, condo tell financing, which uh, back in the day, a lot of clients, I'm sure you guys have, that wanted to buy condo tells, I had to pay cash. Yes. Well, now you can come in, you can come to me, and I can get you great loans at about 25 to 35% down wow. with interest rates still in the 3 to 4% range. That's pretty good. And condo tells just to let everybody know what those are out there. High rises, right? High rises, High correct. rises, basically. Um, owning your own hotel room. <laughs> pretty much. So, some of them will allow short-term rentals. Some of them correct. are long-term. Um, depends on those. And, you know, there's there's a lot of regulation going on right now and with short-term short -term rentals. Yeah. We can do them as owner-occupied, second home, and investment properties. Right. So the program that you go and the occupancy that you're going to take is going to dictate the down payment as well as the rate, but you're still going to be very, very, very competitive. Wow. That's great. And, and those rates are great on investment loans. We, they are. we really, and just to give you guys a timestamp, we're in January, 2022. So if you're looking at these rates in a year from now, they're probably not going to be the same. Yeah. <laughs> well, and then with, we're on YouTube, so we have to I know yeah. with, with your, the types of loans you're speaking about. I mean, that's, that's the way to go all day long. I think with, I mean, what's a, the fine, Ramsey, Dave Ramsey says yes. you should pay cash for investment properties, which I totally disagree with because oh, you should turn around and buy properties all day long with stuff like this. Other if you're covering money. the debt. Yeah. If yeah. you're covering the debt, what you're saying, you're, the debt service, well, you if, should be doing it. Yeah. If, if you're an investor and you have a, a, a plethora of rental properties and you have uh, a lot of equity in them, mm -hmm. it makes sense to pull that equity out buy more rental properties exactly and that's right. that's how it works that's right. how you that's how you build wealth and that's how you build grow that more portfolio yeah. thank yeah. you grow, grow, the portfolio. grow the portfolio because over time i mean that i have i have people that i've worked with that are you know like, like rookie investors you know bought their first investment property they have their job you know they're working like a regular job they're not you know extremely wealthy people or anything like that just your regular working class person um bought their first investment property and then sold that one and took the the cash from that to buy a little bit bigger investment property like um for instance the one one of them that i'm talking about bought a fourplex and now you know it's making three thousand dollars a month on you know just income right. off of that one right one investment property and you know you have a nine to five job and you're just average working class person that's good extra income and a couple of those can build up a retire you know a retirement plan for you absolutely so there's it you don't have to be deep pockets and have a pocket full of cash to be an investor it, it is something that average everyday people have the opportunity to do they just someone has to show them mm -hmm. how to do it show them the way to do it because that they so many people don't understand the opportunity is available for everybody right most of the successful entrepreneurs in real estate that i've had the pleasure of working with are just regular joes that yeah bought a house didn't didn't sell it mm -hmm. decided to take equity out of it yeah buy another house exactly turn that into a rental Yep. And they just repeated that. Just kept on doing that. And over the course of, of 10, 15 years, now they have a half dozen houses. Yeah. If not more. Yeah. And that's, I mean, that's retirement all, all in itself. And if you're working a nine to five and you have a pension too, you're going to retire nice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you're going to have a nice retirement at right. some point in time. You might get sick of having all these properties or whatever and sell them all off. And then mm -hmm. you have a big, you know, a big chunk of money to go travel on or do yeah, whatever you want to sure. do. So it, it's definitely, it's, it it, it's something that is so often overlooked and not often talked about that it's, you know, that it is an opportunity that everybody has. Mm -hmm. They just need to find out the way to do it. Right. Agree. Yeah. Agree. And with these, um, this, this DSCR program is, <clears throat> I know we're talking um, the city and next week I'm going to be doing an entire show on this subject. So um, stay tuned for that. But um, the city is uh, actually relieving some of the regulation in Clark County on um, Airbnb, short-term mm -hmm. rentals. Correct. Um, so these, July, June or July, right? Uh, yeah, June or July. Yeah, and they've, they've passed. There's an assembly bill on it. Um, we're going to dive really deep into that subject because it is, um, it is you know, very interesting. Um, is financing available for these type of properties as well, as long as you can show cash flow? Yes. Yes. Specifically, I mean, if you're looking to do an Airbnb property and you can 
gravitate and get something on, on the strip. Like what did we bring up before, the MGM properties? Yeah, signature. Yeah. That, I mean, signature, yeah. Signature. And yeah. Th those are recently some of the properties that I just recently turned over over the last couple of months. I've done financing on a few of those units. Yeah. Um, but those are the properties I think the investors want to buy because that's the typical Airbnb property because when people come to Vegas, do they, want to, do they want to stay on XYZ Street or do they want to stay on the Strip? Mm -hmm. Yeah. They want to stay on the Strip. Yeah. A lot of times, yeah. That, that, that is where they want to stay. And, and um, I believe Signature has a program there where like, you can even set up where they'll manage the short-term rental yes. for you yes. and, yeah. and work that out. And, and there's a couple of those um, mm -hmm. here in Vegas that do that. They'll manage the short-term for you. They'll help book, market, do everything. Of course, there's a fee. You know, It's not for free. Yeah. but. Um, but that is um, something to where it's just kind of plug and play. You purchase the property and it starts to operate. It what is. other properties are similar to the MGM as far as condo tells um, on the Strip? Veer Towers, I believe. Okay. Um, I, and um, I know Trump Towers will yes. allow um, daily is. rentals. And there's one, I can't think of the name of it right now. It's right on Flamingo and Koval. Um, Flamingo and Koval. Um, 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 it's smaller. I know. I have, I, have, I have a picture of it in yeah, my head. I can't, I think, can't of think of the name of, the name of, it, of it, but it's also the same. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, um, so, yeah. There's a few. Yeah, there's a few there. here. And I, oh, um, I might, I may be misspeaking here, but I think Jewel even has a short-term rental yeah. program, but they just got, um, their, their overall project just got FHA approved. So that might've eliminated with the FHA approval because now you can buy a condo in Jewel mm -hmm. on, with FHA, which you couldn't do that since they've been built. This is, um, this is recent. So that regulation may have changed, but I know they were, di they did have a program where they were renting it out for you for mm -hmm. a while. Um, they would stage it and, and do everything as yeah. well. Yeah, and so. what's nice about those, like the signature again, is it, it, you're right, it's a fee, and so it takes so it eats away at your cash flow, but it's plug and play, like you said. It's I mean, it, it's just like a hotel. If if someone goes in there and they, they break the end table, right? They bring another end table right, right back up that's identical. So, yeah. yeah. I, think yeah. It, I think it makes sense if you own, whether it's one rental property or a dozen, mm -hmm. hire a property manager. Why, yeah. why, why, why do you want to be bothered mm -hmm. with all that nonsense by yourself? Most people don't have the temperament to do it. Yeah. You know, and I don't even, what is, what is the fee for a rental, uh, for, well, is it 8%, they vary, 6%, 6, 10%? 10 percent. It, it, it depends. It varies. But, um, you know, a good property manager and, yes. and, and I, you know, I know a good property manager. He was on the show, um, a couple months ago and, and, a good property manager is going to get you more money for for rent than whatever mm -hmm. you know whatever you're going to you're going to look at average rent you're going to list your home but somebody that's in the business just like realtors you know when we list a home where yeah you can go off comps but if we're every day working in the market we mm -hmm. know what can fly and what can't right. you know Correct. as far as being sold and the same thing with property managers and you do you do a little bit of property yeah, management yeah, I can too speak right to it firsthand yeah i mean we yeah. manage about a 300 uh a oh, portfolio of about 300 lot. properties that's a lot um, you do yeah. a lot of property management. yeah so we have that yeah. segment of our business and and just what you said i mean doing it you know being involved in it is i would never want to be an owner and do it myself i yeah. mean you, you want that headache off your well, well off let, me, your let me ask you this if you have a problem with your car would you fix it yourself heck no or would you take it to a professional <laughs> exactly it's it's the same thing right and yeah. pe you know people people that do things like that i i, I don't get it yeah. but that's just me i yeah. mean there's a fee but at the end of the day that it, it all of it, it you know listing your home on with with a professional realtor that knows mm -hmm. what they're doing is going to make you more money in the end mm -hmm. than trying to sell it your oh my gosh for sell by owners i mean you see them get just right. mowed over all the time that it's it, trying to do it yourself saving that six percent is, is not going to save you money at the end of the day right. and the same thing with property management you know it's not going to save you money yeah. and you're going to get, you know, I mean, you have these like relationships with your tenants, you know, and then they call you and the next thing you know, mm -hmm. you know, you're, you're dealing with your missing payments right. and calling you in the middle of the night because the AC went yeah. out and what are you going to do? Having someone take care of all of that in the long term is just going to make you more money. And, yeah. and it's really people need to get over the fee of things mm -hmm. because it's not the fee. It's paying a professional to handle what they know best. Mm -hmm. You do not know best. Stay in your... 
stay in your lane. You well, know, and, that's... and what a lot of people don't realize, owners, when they're looking at it, is the ex the added layer of protection. You know, well, that's what that's what we're there for. I mean, we're, we obviously we work for the owner, but we have good relationships with our tenants. We make sure they abide by the lease and the law, but yes. we also make sure the owners abide by the law. Right. right. I mean, we protect them because a lot of them don't know. They want to do things that they shouldn't be doing, and we don't allow that. You know, or we won't manage their property. Or they don't. Yeah, they simply don't know. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, I had um, I had a client that, you know, one time in the past, he was, you know, like uh, doing his self-managing and taking applications. And, you know, someone had a dog and um, it was a service dog. He didn't want to allow pets. And, you know, he didn't he didn't know no. any better. He wasn't right. being He didn't know wrong. what a service dog was. Yeah. Well, he... He did, I, I mean, he, he knew what a service dog was, but he didn't know that that didn't apply to pet deposits. Right. Luckily, he found out that, you know, the person that was applying had explained to him and he looked into it, researched it and found out that that is correct. But so many people could make that mistake and not know any better and then find themselves in a lawsuit right. over something mm -hmm. they didn't know about because they're not qualified that's in the industry. True. They're not correct. professionals in the industry. That's not what they do every day. They're not... We wouldn't expect them to know that, but for the same on the same point, we sh shouldn't expect them to be managing properties when they don't know what they're doing either. Right. Yeah. And you mentioned something about fees before. Mm -hmm. Something I always stress to people when they're going through a real estate transaction: you know, these are the necessary evils that everybody has to pay yes. to buy a house, whether it's you, you, or me. And I get so frustrated on the lending side. When I'm referred to somebody like you guys, refer your valuable clients to a guy like me, because obviously you have trusted me. When clients go searching for loans on the internet. Oh my God. Big mistake. <laughs> yes. Big mistake. And, and this is why. Please stop. No, I, I, always, I always say, you know what? You're more than, I, I encourage you to go get another quote. But when you get a quote from an inter internet lender, you don't know where they are. We're not doing this. There's, there's no FaceTime. Mm -hmm. Get me the loan estimate. Let me look at it. Even if you're not going to use me, let me critique it. Let me show you what you're not seeing. Because nine out of ten times, but, but Rocco, their rate is so much lower than, than oh. yours. But 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 look at look at what they're charging you on the bottom. What I'm not, and people don't see that. And that's how when they go to closing, that's when they crash into a wall and go, "Oh my God!" Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you're buying a house, and now you can't back out. You got to pay it. Yeah. So just be mindful. And so many times, how many times have you just been scrolling through whatever, I don't know, just scrolling an internet world, right? And you see like 2.2 .2 interest rate. And you're like, wow, I haven't seen those in a while. Click on it. It's, it's, they're misleading. There yes. are so just... many misleading things out there. And I, you know, I'll have people call me and say, well, I seen this one had 2.2. And I'm like, you know what? If you go to talk to them, get a loan estimate, get right. an absolute breakdown. That's not what they're advertising. It, it mm -hmm. that's a, that's, that's to it's catch you. Switch. It's a bait and switch. It's mm -hmm. to pull you in. And do you really want to work with somebody that is getting business by that method? I think it's Correct. slimy. Yeah. And, and, you know, same thing, new construction. It's, it's uh, that new construction is like a, a, a thorn in my side right now, right? Because mm -hmm. there's all these new builders outside. They have um, out there. They have all these great websites that are like, yeah, we have homes at 360. They have no homes at 360. Mm -hmm. They're advertising this. You find out, but you go down to their office and you know you you find out all the things. And they're nine months out, and they have fifty thousand uh, dollar lot fees, and there's all of this stuff. It's misleading how they're pulling people in. But yet you talk to a, a buyer that's calling you remotely from California, and she's like, "No, no, I see this website it says homes there are three sixty. They're right. not. Mm -hmm. Looks like, like <laughs> no, that, that, that's like I'm sure you guys have seen." Uh, the car advertiser, the car dealership. Yes. They have the car. We have this car on the lot. It's priced at yada, 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 yada. You get all excited. You get your car, you drive over there. Oh, we saw that two days ago, but we have this and it's double the price. Of yeah. course. Yeah. The, it, it's just, I mean, it's to me, it's, it's slimy, sleazy way of pulling people in and yeah. then getting all of our clients to where they're questioning what the professionals are telling them. And right. we're trying to explain, we know what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. Please listen to us. So what's very important on that, as it happens all the time, is um, the lender ends up not being able to perform, right? For whatever reason, like the condo oh, project's gosh. not approved or they won't lend in that project. There's just so much that goes into what you guys Those do. internet lending and, companies, um, yeah. And that's why it's, I think that's why it's important to talk to a professional. It's important, I feel like it's important that us as agents, we 
have good, you know, I, that's what we practice. I mean, I want to have a good relationship with every agent in the Valley and everybody I work with. Yes. Because if I have something listed and you bring me a buyer and I say, well, who's your lender? Who's the lender, Trish? Well, it's XYZ lender. I might be able to say that lender can't perform in here. You do your homework really quick because I've had it come to this point before and then they bail. Because yeah. whatever, there's some litigation in the HOA, or it, and it's something silly, like someone's behind on their, you know, and then they bail out. And um, so it's really important that everybody has a really good rapport and everybody communicates. Yeah. Some of the lenders that we work with as a broker, they have some really great tools that I can utilize specifically for condos. I can go right into their website, type in either the name of the condo, the condo association, or the address. And it will tell me in seconds if it's Fannie Mae, FHA approved. It will tell me VA if there's approved. any if VA approved. Mm -hmm. It will tell me if there's any litigation on it. Mm -hmm. This way I can guide you and your clients and say, hey, guys, you know what? We can't, go we, we can't do a traditional loan, but we can go a non-traditional, do a non-warrantable, mm -hmm. which non-warrantable is going to cost more money down, mm -hmm. higher rate. So at that point, we have to educate the buyer or the client say, okay, we can do this, but it's good. We got to go this route, or we can pull back and go find you something that's approved. Right. And I'd rather a buyer be educated and counsel in the beginning then because of that than to drag it out 30 to 45 days and mm -hmm. throw everyone into a big mess. And there's yeah. so many lenders out there that'll do that. Right. Like, are they just wishing? Are they they're, hoping it's going They're They're sitting there praying like, I hope it closes, but there's no hope. Yeah. Something I yeah. learned a long time ago, and I learned from my dad, Hope should never be part of your business plan. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, do your homework, rely yeah. on the professionals. That's what we do. Yeah, you have to know going in. A, a good example would be I was just, I have a buyer that wants to buy in a high rise and they wanted a particular high mm -hmm. rise. So I went in and what I did is I just looked at all the recent sales in there and every one of them was cash. And I'm like, why is there all cash? Of course. And the first thing I did is then I call people I can count on. And I'm like, what's going on in here? Oh, there's a lawsuit. Mm -hmm. No loans in there right now. Right. So, I mean, yeah. let, let's just put the kibosh on that right, right now. Don't even worry about it. Do your due diligence. Yeah. There's so many times that I've had listed condos that are not, you know, they're not FHA approved. I do not add that onto the listing specifically. Mm -hmm. I put in the agent agent remarks, not FHA approved. You can't loan FHA right. in this pro in, in this community. And I get offers that are FHA and I'm like, what are they trying to do here? Yeah. Like it's so, you know, it, it's, yeah. it, it's just not, you know, people just don't pay attention. And um, some people act very recklessly out I'm there. I'm so yeah. glad that you said that. Each and every time that I have a client that wants to buy a condo, the first thing that I do when I'm talking to the agent is before we even go the next step, send me the T-sheet. Let me read yes. it. Let me look at it. You might have missed something. And nine out of ten times, it says exactly what you said. Mm -hmm. Can't do FHA, can't do this, can't do that, cash only. Mm -hmm. And that's for specific reasons. Yeah, right. yeah. I, I mean, I do the research. If I know it's a condo, I do the research before even posting that listing. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not going to, you know, try to get my sellers in a mess. Right. Um, anyways, it has been a great show. Sorry to just keep on rambling on here, but um, thank you guys again no. for coming. Yeah, thank Walt, you. People um, that want to reach out to you, they have questions on, you know, real estate or property management. How do they reach you? Uh, well, easiest way would be um, my phone number, 702 6005874. Email address is walt.imsteam at gmail.com. And then you can find me on all the socials. I'm Walt Ford. So Walt it's, Ford. it's a unique enough name that I got it on Instagram, you know, Facebook, TikTok, everywhere. It's just Walt Ford. Walt Ford. That's easy to remember. Mm -hmm. So good. And, and you guys, if you are watching on video, you've seen all of his information there on the screen. We'll also have it posted on the website. Rocco, how do people reach you? Easiest way to reach me is on my cell phone. It's area code 303-847-7455. If you uh, want to try to reach me on Instagram, just look up Lone Wolf. Lone Wolf. Ooh, L -O -A I like that. L-O-A-N. <laughs> Lone Wolf. Lone Wolf. Wow, you guys are both got some easy, catchy ways to, you know, to you, find you. You got to get out to the masses. You got, you, you got to be different. You have to have, what do they call You have to have an angle and a hook. Yeah, yeah, yeah something, that, something that's remember, catchy. That, that you can remember. Absolutely. Well, guys, I don't have um, so, no, um, any fancy name to reach me at, but if you want to get a hold of me, Trish Williams, um, Trish Williams at kw.com's email address. 
uh, phone number 702-308-2878 and always here on Facebook at Realty Check 702. Um, thank you. Thank you for joining us. If you guys are following the show, like, comment, share, download, send me feedback. Let me know what you guys want to hear, what topics you want to talk about. Next week, we're going to be diving really deep into these Airbnbs and short-term rentals and legislation regarding that. So that's going to be an interesting topic. You'll definitely want to stay tuned for that. Um, and we are also going to start highlighting people in the local Las Vegas community. We're a hyper-local show, um, hyper-local team, hyper-local um, with everything here. Because I'm a Vegas girl, we're going to start um, highlighting people that are just doing great things here in Vegas. Thank you guys for joining and we'll see you next week.